We continue to create retro landscape animation in Maya. The first part of this tutorial can be found in the description. In this part, I'll show you how to create the animated land step by step. But before we get to it, let's clean up the outliner and hide all the helpers we created with the sun. So select the Place 3D Texture and parent it to the sun. Now select Sun and Repro Mesh groups and add them both to Mesh GRP. Hide the Mesh group and also hide the Texture Placer. So now we can see only the sun in our scene. Let's get back to the land. Create a plane, rename it to land underscore geo. Set the width up to 10 and the high up to 20. Increase the subdivision to 100 and 200 respectively. Change the UVs parameter to normalization off. Now go to deform, texture and make sure the direction is set to normal. Now click the chessboard like button near the texture attribute and create a ramp node. Add a new ramp point in the middle. Make it black. And the endpoints white. Change the type of the ramp to U ramp. So the gradient follows the same way as the sun. Now the white points will represent the mountain's area, while the black point in the middle creates a road. Let's work on the mountains. Select the white point and apply texture to a selected color attribute. Find the noise in the list and let's set up it properly. I've already spent some time to find the parameters that I like, so I won't take your time right now and I will go with the settings I have already chosen. The noise is black and white texture where black areas will draw gaps while white creates the mountains. So let's set the parameters. The amplitude basically works as a contrast. I decrease it to 0.5. Ratio increases the details of the noise. Keep it high for sharp mountains and low for kinda soft hills. I set it to 1. Frequency ratio. Scales the details of the noise. It won't affect if the depth parameter is set to 1. The value of 1.4 made my texture more uniform. Depth max adds extra layers of the noise on top, increasing detailization. I set it to 4. Frequency basically scales the noise up and down. I set it to 4.2. The density influences the size of the noise cells. I decrease it to 0.47 to separate the mountains from each other. The spotiness randomizes the contrast of the noise, making some mountains higher than another. I set it to 0.35. Size randomness and randomness attributes are speaking for themselves. I set them both to 1. Now we can play with the time attribute to find the best pattern. Later we'll go back to the settings to finalize the results. So don't spend too long on this now. To reveal the mountains on the other side, let's return to the ramp attributes. Now go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Select the Texture tab. Now find our noise, select the white gradient point and drag and drop our noise with the middle mouse button to the selected gradient point. Also you might already notice that our mountains kinda stretched. Let's fix it in Hypershade. Hold the right mouse button on the noise texture and choose Graph Network. Select the Place to the Texture node. As our land isn't a square, we also have to squeeze the UVs vertically. So I set the repeat UV parameter to the value of 2. Done! The mountains are too small yet, so let's increase the size. In the attribute editor, find the texture deformer tab and increase its strength. I'll go with 5. I'm also going to decrease the number of the plane subdivisions to emphasize the low poly style. Go to the channel box and set subdivision width to 70 and the subdivision's height to 140. It is important to keep the aspect ratio both in the size and subdivisions. Also, go to the mesh display and apply Harden Edge. Ok, the mountains looks pretty good. I definitely don't need the sun in the middle of this scene, so let's move it where it should be. Select the sun and by holding the X button, snap it to the end of the land. Move it up a bit and scale. It is time to set up the camera. Go to Create, Cameras and add camera to the scene. Now hold the X button and drag and drop it to the beginning of the land. Scale down the camera object a bit. It won't affect the camera settings, only the viewport look of the camera. Now I'll select two viewports layout, 
and in the left one I am gonna set camera view by going to panels, perspective, camera 1 and also I'll turn on the film gate. In the right window I am gonna lift up the camera while in the left I can see the result. Place the camera so we can see the mountains but also it shouldn't be too high. In the camera viewport go to the view and lock the camera. And now is the right time to go back to our texture deformer and edit the noise. So I select the land and go back to the texture deformer tab. Select the texture. First goes the ramp node. By moving the extreme points closer to the center, you will make the transition between the road and the mountains sharper. You can add an extra black point to control the width of the road. But I'll go with the one point this time. Also, you can change the interpolation method to get some different look of the road and its transition to the mountains. I will keep the linear for this tutorial. Now you can go back to the noise node and play with the parameters of the noise to achieve an even better result. I won't change it now, but go on, do something different, try them out. We still need to add a glowing grid on the land. Create a platonic primitive. Scale down the radius to 0.1. Also create a cylinder. Change the subdivision axis to 5. Now let's isolate our cylinder. Oh, make sure you are using perspective camera. Hold the right button on the geometry and select vertex. Select the middle vertex on top and on the bottom. Convert them to face and delete the cap polygons. Let's also scale down the cylinder and freeze transforms. Leave the isolation mode. Oh, still too big. We need to make it even thinner than platonic. Scale down once more. Delete history, freeze transform. Now go to Mesh tab. Select the platonic first and create a mesh network. Rename it to Mesh Glowing Dots. Go to the Distribute node and change distribution type to Mesh. Maya will give you a warning, asking to select the mesh you want to use. Simply hold the middle mouse button on the land in the outliner and drag and drop it into the input mesh. Change the method from scatter to vertex and turn on the fluid mesh. It will draw the platonic in every single vertex of the land. As you can see, it is way too big. Let's select the source mesh and in inputs parameters, I'm gonna scale down the radius to 0.02. Let's check the camera view. I guess I'm gonna make it even smaller. 0.01 will do. Now create a mesh network for the cylinder too. Rename the network to Mesh Glowing Grid. Select the distribute node. Oops, wrong one. And choose Mesh as a distribution type again. Connect the land geo to the mesh input. And change the method to edge, so the cylinders will be drawn on the edges. Also enable the Fluid Mesh option. Then find the Face Edge Settings tab and enable Scaling. This option scales the cylinder according to the length of the edge on which they are placed. So now we only have to find the right proportions of it. Select the original cylinder and scale it until it fits the length of the edge. As you can see, no matter how long is an edge, the cylinder will always follow the length. It's time to add some materials to the scene. Select the cylinder and the platonic. Right click in the viewport, assign new material. In Arnold tab, find IE standard surface. Rename the material to IE glowing grid. Turn off the base and the specular. Then turn on emission parameter and change the color to an aqua blue. I'll switch back to the camera view. Now select the land geo, assign new material, Arnold IE standard surface. Rename it to IE land mat. We'll do some sort of stained glass here. First turn off the base color. Then select bright purple for the specular color. And increase anisotropy up to 0.6 to add a slight metallic look. Let's set up the render. Open render settings and set the image size. I'm gonna use full HD preset. Then go to Arnold tab. For now I will set the test render, but later we'll increase some values to get nice and clean final result. 
leave the camera anti-aliasing value on 3. As I turned off diffuse for all materials in this scene, I'll decrease its value to 0. Also decrease specular to 1 to get faster renders. I'll increase it later. Transmission, SSS and volumetrics are missing in this scene, so I set them all to 0. Then go to the Ray Depth tab. Decrease total to 6. I will leave specular on 1 by now. And all others, like diffuse transmission, transparency depths and volumes, set to 0. Now close the render settings and let's render the image. If the render is still way too slow, you can decrease the camera anti-aliasing to the value of 2. The render looks quite boring and way too dark. So let's stop some lights in this scene. But first, I want to reverse the sun material so it has light yellow on top and red on the bottom. To do that, select the sun and in the attribute editor find the material tab. Find the gradient and reverse it by moving the sliders. To make the sun actually light in the scene, select it, go to Arnold tab and choose Mesh Light. The sun becomes great, but it's alright. Choose Show Original Mesh to return the colors. Then increase the exposure, let's say up to 10. We'll check it on the render later, but first let's add the color to the light. I'll go with a bright pink. Or actually a bit more reddish. Also it looks overexposed, so I'm gonna decrease the exposure to 6. Ok, I like the lights, but the sun looks too pale. So let's get back to the sun material, find the ramp and let's move the pink slider on the center. I gonna add one more slider with a colder violet color, so it matches the length. And I want to make our yellow more saturated. Let's also change the interpolation method. Good, now we should add some sky. But first, select Platonic and the cylinder, group them and rename the group to Mush Grid. Unhide the objects, hide the group instead, and I will put it on top to another Mush Helper group. Oh, make sure your groups have the same naming pattern. I add GRP. The suffixes can be really helpful while structuring the big scenes. Now add a dome light. Go to Arnold tab, Lights, Sky Dome Light. Change the color to dark blue. You can use an HDRI texture of the night sky here, and it will be beautifully reflected by the hills. But in this tutorial I use just a solid dark blue color. I increase an exposure up to 1 to have brighter blue reflections on the hills. And if we render it now, you may see how bright the sky looks. I'd like to keep the reflections on the hills, but make the sky much darker. To do that, go to visibility tab of the dome light and decrease camera visibility. Point 0.1 should be just fine. Mm, I guess I'll go even with a darker blue. And also decrease camera visibility twice. Okay, slightly brighter. And maybe I will add a little bit of violet. Ok, I like what I get. Now I'm gonna add some motion to the landscape. To do that, we basically need to animate the deformer texture. But there is one problem with the looping of the two-dimensional noise. We cannot just move it one way and get the same result in the first and in the last frame. So we'll trick the loop will make the noise texture moving in circles. So when the time ends, we'll get to the same point we started from. And I'll be using the locator for it. So, create a circle. In its settings, make sure the sweep is 360 degrees. Then create a locator. Group them. Rename the group to helper grp. Now as the group selected, Go to the isolation mode and switch camera to the perspective view. Select the locator 
then the path. Go to animation menu set and select constraint, motion path and choose attach to motion path options. In the options change time range from start to end and set it from 0 to 600. Press attach. Now the locator should make a full circle during this time. Let's check the loop. Yep, it's working. And now we have to animate the texture offset according to the position of the locator. To do that, go to the channel box, edit, and open connection editor. Then select place to the texture node in the hyper shade. And as it's selected, press reload right in the connection editor. Our locator should be already set to the left, as it was selected when we opened the editor. But if not, select the locator and reload left the same way we just did with the right column. Our locator is animated in the X and Z axis. So we have to connect these two axes to the offset parameters. Select translate X in the left column and offset U in the right. Maya will automatically connect these two parameters together. Then choose translate Z in the left column and offset V to the right. And these parameters will be connected either. Close the window. Let's leave the isolation mode and check the animation. The motion looks too sharp. It is because the mountains are moving extremely fast. We can fix it by changing the radius of the circle. Select the nerve circle. I'm gonna lift it up a bit to see it better. Now, by scaling it down, you can slow down the speed of the mountains animation. After I tried out some parameters, I ended up with a scale value of 0 0.03. Um, by the way, if you want to make the noise wobble randomly and not slide, just replace the 2D noise with a volume noise. And animate that rotation. It will give you a classic noise animation. But in this case, I tried to achieve an effect when the mountain is kind of moving somewhere and sliding around, not just randomly waving. In the next and the last part of this tutorial, I will show you how to set up the loop, add glowing particles to the scene and set up the final renders. Then we'll finalize the result using Adobe After Effects. Don't miss it, subscribe to our channel and stay updated with the latest tutorials. And See you in the next video.